I greatly enjoyed myself at that pay-per-view. But it's interesting because uh, I was sitting front row. I've never sat front row in an AEW show before, which is astonishing given I'm paid by Tony Khan. I was going to say when he handed you the envelope or the front row tickets in there. What envelope? What are you talking about? Tony handed me an envelope. Tony Leader. Yeah, gave, gave you a gave you a handshake. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I watched the show from the front row, and man, I had a really good time. And uh, I did hear that, you know, it, it is always the case, and I always mention this for live shows, depending on where you were sitting or if you were watching it on television, you may have had a different perception of certain things because uh, life is subjective, everybody. But I'll tell you what I thought from where I was at. Hookhausen match, like six minutes. I mean, literally, it was exactly, exactly what you would expect. Hook and Danhausen beat Tony Nese and Mark Sterling when uh, Danhausen got the pin. Danhausen's super over, by the way. When they hit his music and put his his face up on the big Titantron deal, or whatever they call it, the uh, AEW Tron. But anyway, it was uh, it was fine. It was a fun little match. Wardlow and MJF. So, uh, if you didn't see the match, which who hasn't heard about this match? Basically, uh, MJF, they played his music. At first, he didn't come out. Then he did come out. Then he started doing the flying around the ring thing to uh, mock the fans. And uh, he kept avoiding Wardlow, avoiding Wardlow, avoiding Wardlow. And uh, finally, a little bit of heat. He goes to put the ring on, but the ref's behind him. The ref sees it. The ref pulls the ring off. MJF takes... Five power bombs. Wardlow puts the boot on him for the pin, but then takes the boot off at two. Gives him five more power bombs, and then pins him. And they stretchered out. MJF put the neck brace on the whole nine yards. I mean, when it was over, you know, because of the the uh, the story, the MJF story, a lot of people were immediately, oh man, he's being written off. He's he's out of the territory. This was the bl- like the blow off of a character, et cetera, et cetera. But the funny thing is, like, when I, I – this was exactly – and if, if you remember, everybody, we were talking about this months ago on Brian and Vinny, and my my booking was he should be powerbombed 30 times, right? Well, he got 10, and then he's out of there. So this thing started two and a half years ago. So what did you want for the f- blow-off of the storyline? This is exactly how it should have ended even if the guy is sticking around. More so, in fact, because they didn't blow off the diamond ring. He didn't hit him with the ring. Wardlow didn't kick out. The diamond ring and the uh, one-winged angel are the two most protected things in AEW. And, bro, if this guy's out of here and he's leaving and he's not coming back, you blow off the ring. But they didn't. So that was that. The Hardys and the Young Bucks. This was very hit and miss early mostly because jeff hardy is uh i mean this dude is beat up bad and uh the hardys and the young bucks the young bucks clearly wanted to go in there and give them one last great hardy boys match because man they were working so hard particularly from the front row watching nick jackson in there this guy worked for like 50 guys in one night Probably just exhausted after this match. But, man, they, they I thought by the end, they had a very, very good match. And uh, it has since been announced there was a 10-man tag that was scheduled for Dynamite uh, that featured Jeff Hardy. And uh, Jeff Hardy's been pulled from the match. So, I mean, he was hurt going into the match. And I think it's clear they're like, this dude needs time to get better. So he's pulled. And uh, it is now an eight-man. And so they also pulled Adam Cole. And uh, I've been told that Adam Cole also hurt. So both of the guys were hurt. They didn't just pull Adam Cole because they wanted to go from a ten-man to an eight-man. Adam Cole, he's injured as well. You could see that his his shoulder was all taped up. So... uh, Whatever's going on, like, he's also getting time off to to heal. But uh, I thought the match was good. Other people did not think the match was good. So, Jade Cargill and AJ, I did not think was very good. And I actually thought that Jade Cargill looked pretty good. But uh, they had a match before that was very good. And uh, I don't know what happened here. But Anna J looked like she 
was lost at points. It just, how long did they go? They went uh, seven minutes. And uh, they did shoot the big angle afterwards where we got the debut of the former Athena, or the former Ember Moon. She's now Athena. So uh, she debuted afterwards. Chris Statlander was out there. They did a Jade Cargill Statlander stare down. And after Rampage, when the fans totally turned on Ruby Soho because they wanted uh, a Statlander to win, I don't know if Statlander is going to beat Jade Cargill, but when they did that stare down and, uh, and I saw the reaction to Statlander on Friday, I would not be surprised if they did that. House of Black beat the Death Triangle. This match was awesome. And uh, at the end... They finally pulled the trigger on the Julia Hart turn. Thank God. Not a moment too soon. And uh, she cost Death Triangle the match. This was one of the best matches on the show. Adam Cole beat Samoa Joe to win the men's uh, Owen Hart tournament. And Britt Baker beat Ruby Soho to win the women's tournament. I thought Ruby Soho was going to win, but clearly they wanted the Adam Cole, Britt Baker. They're a couple. They both won. Uh, they did a, a deal afterwards with Martha Hart where uh, Tony Khan basically said, go out there and talk as long as you want. I bought an extra hour of pay-per-view time. So uh, she went out there and she did this great speech and the people were chanting Owen's name and Cole and Baker are standing there like they're both heels, but they're out there and they're like the biggest baby faces getting these trophies and hugging and kissing. The fans like they're both heels, but when they kiss, the fans are like how sweet it is. And then, of course, we got Sammy and Ty, where when they kiss, that's some heat. We had, uh, and speaking of, Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky, Page Van Zant versus Frankie, Sammy, Guevara, and Ty Conti. Uh, Page Van Zant totally not ready to go live. And uh, stuff didn't look good. The guys, uh, for the most part, everything looked great. They uh, had Sammy and Ty constantly kissing to the point that Frankie Kazarian, their partner, eventually was like, dude, I'm out of here. And he goes to walk. But then he wanted to win, so he came back. And uh, ultimately, uh, Sammy accidentally super kicked Ty Conti. That was the big spot in the match. And uh, American top team ended up getting the win. So it's not clear, because they said it two ways. Uh, Sammy Guevara and uh, Frankie Kazarian can either never challenge for the TNT title again, or they can never challenge as long as Scorpio Sky is the champion. On Friday, they said never ever. On the pay-per-view, they said as long as Scorpio Sky was champion. So I'm not sure exactly which one it is at this point. Kyle O'Reilly, Darby Allen, they got 10 minutes. It was great. It would have been better if they would have had more time, but they didn't. And Kyle O'Reilly beat this dude clean in the middle of the ring. So I don't know what... Kyle's being built for something. I don't know what it's going to be. But uh, he beat him clean. So I was surprised. The match was great. Thunder Rose and Serena Deeb, where I was sitting... The crowd seemed very quiet for about the first half of this match. They did get into it at the end, and it was a very good match. But uh, I heard from, like, wherever Dave was at, he goes, oh, they were going crazy the whole match. So uh, wherever you were, you apparently got a uh, different take than, than I did. But it was a good match. Don't get me wrong. It was a very good match. Thunder Rosa retains. She is still the champion. Jericho Appreciation Society versus the Blackpool Combat Club was the craziest match you ever saw. And... Uh, I was front row, so I missed a lot. Because if you were, like, in the suites, you could see the entire arena. You could see everything that's going on. Obviously, if you were at home, you could see everything that was going on. I could only see what was happening at ringside, which was a lot. And uh, they had a crazy, wild, awesome brawl. They played Moxie's music two times through. And after they played it the first time through, they started playing it the second. It was like a New Jack match. And the fans, they did the biggest pop when they started playing the music again. I thought they were going to play the music through the entire match. And I was actually furious when they shut it off. But given the match went 23 minutes, it was the right call for Chris Jericho, rock star. His character hates rock music. And so he destroyed the soundboard and the music shut off. And I thought this match was probably the best match on the show. Jurassic Express versus Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland and Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. Another great match. And uh, Tony Khan mentioned in the post-show press conference, and it's true, there have never been, there's never been an AEW pay-per-view where the last three matches had this much heat. And it was a long show, and this crowd should have been dead tired. But, man, there was heat for this match. And uh, Jurassic Express won. 
They're still doing the slow turn to the uh, the Christian turning on Jungle Boy, but they haven't pulled the trigger yet. This was an excellent match. And then the main event was CM Punk and Adam Page. Tons of heat. It, it was It was like there were people that wanted Page to win. There were people that wanted Punk to win. But instead of, like, cheering wildly the one that they wanted to win, they just booed the other guy. So it sounded like a match where the crowd hated both guys, but they actually loved their guy, but booed louder for the guy that they didn't want to win. And uh, CM Punk ended up hitting the GTS. He won the title for Madam Page. And despite all of the booing for CM Punk at certain points during the match, this dude won the title, and it was 100% cheers. And they went crazy for this guy, and he played his music. And FTR came out to give him the big hug. And he did a post-show babyface promo, putting over his wife and the locker room and the fans and FTR. And he left like the biggest babyface you ever saw. It was a very good main event, new champion. And, uh, man, when this show was over, I thought, it wasn't the greatest AEW show I ever saw. But, man, I had a good time. And Vinny has driven all the way here, and his camera's now working. Oh, cool. Classic point of the back of the tv all Riveting. right yep we go that way yeah, nope I, wrong way bro 180 degrees oh, the wrong way oh. yep we don't need two cameras on me hey oh, there hey. he is by the way you need a good nose hair trimming if you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and 99 cents per month you can enjoy full length editions of the brian and Vinny show wrestling observer live figure four daily with tom lawler and lance storm the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.